Hello everyone, my name is Jeffet, I'm from Rubik's Academy and today I'm actually here to address two very important questions. The first question is the question of whether are we in recession or not. The second question is the question of whether we, uh, whether we have seen the bottom for the market. So, to answer the first question, I think it's important for us to first look at the S&P 500 index because for the last few recessions, the S&P 500 has played a crucial role in observing the extent to which the market turned down and most importantly, the timing with which the S&P 500 went down is with almost perfect accuracy in relation to the previous crisis, the previous recessions. So let's take a look at the S&P 500. Now, so this is the short term chart. Let's go to the overall view. Okay, so this is the overall view of the S&P 500 since the very beginning, back in 1970. Right. So 1970 to 1971 was when the USD was taken off the gold standard at the Bretton Woods Conference. So it's the same about the same timing with which at which the S&P 500 started to record, start, uh, was created as an index for people to trade. Now, I'm going to remove all these things to make it a bit clearer. Just to make everything a bit clearer. Now, if you observe, there has been two visible, very visible downturns for the S&P 500. The first downturn came back in 2001. All right, this part, this part over here, 2001. Now, for the year of 2001, you saw the first crisis, and 2001 was the year at which 911 occurred. So the S&P 500 went down for the first time in 2001. The second time was of course back in 2008 where Bastons, right, where Bastons and Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. So uh, most of us heard of Lehman Brothers, but we haven't heard of Bastons. But actually Bastons is another investment bank that also played a crucial role in the 2008 crisis. I'm not sure why it's not so marketed, but I believe it could be the degree of default is different. Right, but 2008 was the Lehman Brother crisis. So you can see back in 2008, right, there was also a downturn. Now, the indicators that I'm using here, first of all, I'm using the GMMA, which is the Guppy Multiple Moving Average. You can see that for both downturns, the GMMA, actually, the green line actually went below the red line. Same thing over here. The green line went below the red line. Only back only in about 2009, when the market started recovering, the green line started to go above the red line. Now, if we go back to the current state of affairs, you can see here that the GMMA has barely gone below the red line, the green line has barely gone below the red line. So what does that mean? This is one technical indicator that shows you that the recession hasn't seen its full swing or technically we are not in recession yet. Okay. Another important indicator that you can see from the chart 
all right, is what I call Fibonacci retracement. I'm sure a lot of technical traders use this as well, but for me, I use it because it's very useful for telling you what the previous crisis, what the previous recessions have done to the market, especially to S&P 500. Now, of course, there's the Dow Jones. There's also the Russell 2000, but I don't use those two because S&P 500 basically consists of all the blue chip companies in America. And it does, it, it's a leading indicator in terms of economic performance. So if you want to use whatever meta I'm about to highlight here on your other, on Dow Jones or on Russell, Russell 2000, feel free to do it. But I have noticed that it's not as effective. So if I were to minimize this, all right. And if I were to draw a Fibonacci retracement, all the way from the previous bull run to the top, all right, which is around here, you will see that the retracement, all right, from here all the way to here, okay, let me just draw a line. This is the retracement, all right? This is, this is not a trend line. This is just a line telling you where the retracement is, <laughs> okay? So in case you fought me for drawing not, not drawing a perfect trend line, this is not a trend line, all right? So this red line here is where the market went down. So you can see that when it went down, it went to the, it went past the 61.8% level of the FIBO retracement. Where is the 61.8 level? The 61.8 level is here. This is 61.8 level. The blue line, the blue line, right? Give it a brighter color. All right, that's the 61.8 level. So that's the, that was the extent of the damage that had been done for the 2001 crisis. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to extend this feeble to the next peak. All right, the next peak is here. That this is the next peak. All right, right here. This is the next peak. So I'm going to extend beyond it. All right, you can see that for the from the years 2000 to 2007. All right, this was a constant resistance. There was a constant resistance at this level in terms of the S&P 500. All right, the orange line is the resistance, which was at about 1,570. Now, this was the year, October 2007, where the defaulting started to happen. Bamman Stens and Lehman Brothers, the defaulting started to happen. So you can see this time the market went all the way to the seventy-eight point six percent feeble retracement level, which is at 682. In fact, S&P 500 went to a low of 666.8. That was the low. All right. So you can see that using the FIBO retracement, a typical crisis will set the S&P 500 back to the 61.8 or even the 78.6% level. That is when you see a full swing of the entire crisis, it will set you back all the way to those levels. Now let's take a look at the current situation, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the current situation.
Okay, so same thing. We're going to draw a feeble retracement. We're going to draw a feeble. We're going to draw a feeble retracement. All right. And you can see this right here. That was the low, right? That was the low created at the 2008 financial Lehman Brothers crisis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch to the top, all the way to the top. Now that right there was the entire bull run from 2009 all the way to 2020. That's the entire, entire bull run. And you can see right here, you can see clearly that even if you were to take the low, which is around here, it has not even touched the 50% level. Where is the 50% level? The 50% level is here. The yellow line is the 50% level of the feeble Nanchi retracement. And the 50% level is above the 61.8% level and also above the 78.6% level. Now, what does that tell you or what does that tell us? It tells us that the current crisis or whatever you call it, correction, has barely met its bottom if we compare it to 2001 and 2008. So the question is very simple. Are we in recession? Technically, not yet. But we could be looking at the start of the recession. But has the market met its bottom if this is going to be a recession? Now, my answer to you is no. A firm, firm no. It has not. It has not met its bottom. It has not. All right. So where do I personally predict that it's going to meet its bottom? Well, if you ask me, the bottom, the bottom, okay, will be somewhere here. You see the white box? That is where I think the S&P 500 will settle at when the entire recession has met its full swing. If we are in a recession, but it does look like we are at the start of the recession. It does look that way for now. Okay, so my prediction, all right, the S&P 500 if this is a recession, we'll settle between 1,800 to about 1,500, which is 1,500, which is the previous, the previous resistance for the two previous crises. All right. So that's my opinion on where we are going as a market. I think the S&P 500 again is a very good indicator because it has always been accurate in predicting the downturns and the upturns. And most, most of the investment, a big part of the entire investment climate rests on the shoulders of S&P 500 index. All right, so I think that's my own prediction, but definitely we are not, we are not in the recession yet. And even if we are in the recession, let's say this is the start of the recession, we have barely seen the bottom. So don't be in a hurry to go in. 
do not be in a hurry to go in. Okay? That's all. Thanks.